Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. This week it emerged that Ferguson Shipyard had received preferential treatment from this government and its agencies in its bid to build two ferries. Ferguson were the only bidder giving special access to a 424 page cheat sheet on how to build ferries. A cheat sheet they literally copied page after page after page from. They received a confidential in-person meeting with the people involved in buying the ferries. They were the only bidder allowed to resubmit with a new design, something a former technical director of CAMAC called completely wrong. Then, after the deadline, they were the only company allowed to change their price. So, First Minister, why did Ferguson Shipyard, then owned by an SNP government economic adviser and a prominent independent supporter, receive special treatment from your government? First Minister. Before I come on to uh, the specifics, presiding officer, um, perhaps Douglas Ross wants to uh, make his mind up uh, what his allegations actually are. For uh, months now, uh, Douglas Ross appears to have alleged in this chamber and elsewhere, wrongly, uh, I hasten to add, uh, the Scottish Ministers uh, directed, forced CMAL against its will to award this contract to Ferguson Shipyard. Today, it appears to be the case that Douglas Ross is alleging that CMAL actually in some way collaborated uh, with Ferguson to ensure that the contract went to that shipyard. Um, so, so perhaps Douglas Ross just needs to get a little bit of clarity um, about uh, the allegations Thank he you. Is Thank making. you. Uh, let me turn to the specifics, uh, presiding officer. Uh, ministers are not aware of any impropriety in this procurement process. That said, uh, ministers were not involved in the process. We were not cited on procurement documents or privy to exchanges between CMAL and bidders. However, the allegations in the BBC Disclosure uh, programme are serious allegations. I asked the Permanent Secretary to engage uh, with Audit Scotland earlier this week about further investigation, and I welcome the confirmation from Audit Scotland uh, that they will be looking at the substance of these allegations. Um, just finally, presiding officer, on one of the specific allegations, of course, uh, relating uh, to the CALMAC, uh, the CMAL statement of operational and technical uh, requirements, of course that needs to be properly investigated. But as I understand it, there is no suggestion at all that it was CMAL uh, that passed that document uh, to Ferguson's. In fact, I think the BBC suggested uh, that was a design consultant. So yes, these are serious allegations. They should be investigated in the normal way. Um, and in the meantime, we will continue uh, to support Ferguson's shipyard in the work to complete the ferry contract. Douglas Ross. The only conclusion that any reasonable person can draw is that the deal was rigged. It seems Nicola Sturgeon is the only one that saw the programme this week who doesn't think the deal was rigged. And she's asking for clarity. It would be helpful for members trying to get clarity if all the information was available rather than coming out as it did this week. Because the documents that were finally revealed this week show that Ferguson had that cheat sheet. They got their answers whispered in advance, and then they got to change the answers after the deadline. No other company got to do that. But we didn't find out any of that, none of it, until a leaked dossier was uncovered by investigative journalists. Nobody knew about the depth and breadth of the special treatment that Ferguson received. During lengthy investigations, neither Audit Scotland or a parliamentary committee got any of these details. Instead, we got secrecy. The public were kept in the dark. The Scottish Government's auditor was kept in the dark. This Parliament was kept in the dark. It's clear that there has been a cover-up by the First Minister's Government and its agencies. So, First Minister, tell us, why didn't any of this come to light until now? First Minister. The Scottish Government has and will continue to fully cooperate uh, with parliamentary investigations and indeed, as I think Audit Scotland uh, has itself noted, uh, fully cooperate with any Audit Scotland investigation. Uh, the clarity I uh, asked for from Douglas uh, Ross uh, was an important one. Uh, people watching First Minister's questions will have heard him in previous weeks and months 
uh, stand in this chamber and suggest that CMAO didn't ever want to give this uh, contract to Ferguson Shipyard, that they were somehow forced to do so against their will by the Scottish Government. That was wrong, and I think it has been evidenced that that is wrong. But today, of course, uh, Douglas Ross comes to this chamber and Thank says you. the contrary. Thank you. CMAO uh, somehow colluded uh, with the Yard to ensure that the contract uh, went there. Um, we will continue uh, to ensure uh, that investigations are supported. As I said, I asked the Permanent Secretary this week uh, to engage further with Audit Scotland, and I welcome the statement made by Audit Scotland. This was a procurement process conducted by CMAO. Uh, ministers were not involved, rightly and properly, not involved in the procurement process. Uh, the job of ministers uh, was to save that shipyard from closure yep. and save and support the jobs of yep. the people that continue to work at the shipyard, and we will continue to offer that support. Yep. Dr. Ross. So by giving Ferguson special treatment in details that were only unearthed this week, it appears as if the government has broken EU laws and it may have committed fraud. But the First Minister thinks this is no big deal, just another SNP disaster no one should pay any attention to. There is nothing to see here. But this does matter. This does matter. Thank you. Thank you. This does matter. It matters to the islanders who have been abandoned by this government. And it matters because the price and the delays keep spiralling further. It emerged yesterday in a letter from Ferguson to a committee of this parliament that the delays are continuing. Hull 802 is now going to be six years late. And according to Ferguson's, their total project budget was 125.5 million in March of this year, but now the maximum budget is 209.6 million. That's an increase of 84 million pounds. In their letter to the committee, Ferguson said they briefed Scottish ministers on this last week. So, First Minister, what did they say to ministers, and will you confirm this latest enormous cost increase is correct? First Minister. Uh, what I do agree with Douglas Ross is on the fact that these things matter, which is why I and the government take them as seriously as we do. Uh, the information given to uh, ministers by the new management at Ferguson Shipyard is the information that is set out in the letter that was sent to the parliamentary committee tomorrow. But if Douglas Ross wants to uh, wait for the rest of uh, the answer, he might uh, get the detail he is requesting. Uh, firstly, in terms of the delivery uh, schedule, uh, the target date uh, for 8.01 has not changed. Uh, the target date for 8.02, there is an estimated further slippage of one to two months. On costs, uh, Ferguson's has uh, set out its latest estimate of cost, but this is the key point. Uh, ministers uh, have yet to properly scrutinise uh, that estimate, so no decision, no decision has yet been taken about any further increase in the budget uh, for the ferries. As uh, that process of due diligence, uh, which government has to undertake, uh, is completed, uh, we will update Parliament in the normal way. Uh, that is what we will continue to do as we work to continue to support the shipyard, uh, to support the completion of the ferries, and yes, uh, to support uh, the jobs that depend on that shipyard. That's the responsible approach to government. Uh, and finally, presiding officer, I'm not sure Conservative Douglas Ross is on very strong ground at all today in talking about government disasters. Douglas Ross. Well, given that answer, I don't think Nicola Sturgeon will ever be on very strong ground speaking about ferries because she is incredibly saying that the £84 million projected in the letter to a committee of this parliament and spoken to her government ministers a week ago is going to be scrutinised. That's basically the First Minister saying it is going to be an £84 million increase for three months. I'm not sure what scrutiny of these estimates is going to come up with, other than saying that a three-month delay is basically costing taxpayers about a million pounds a day, because that's what £84 million comes from. And of course, the First Minister told me in March of this year that she took ultimate responsibility for this deal that the buck stopped with her. So let's hear her take ultimate responsibility 
for the Great Ferry Scandal. Her government agreed a deal for the ferries without agreeing a design for the ships. Her government ignored experts who advised not to go ahead with the deal. Her government waived a refund guarantee that is a mandatory requirement of these kind of contracts. And now it appears that the whole deal was rigged. The government seems to have given special treatment to a political adviser and ally, and this looks like corporate fraud, and there is a stench of political corruption. But nobody's been sacked, the government says nobody is responsible, and nobody is to blame. Just what happened to the First Minister, who used to have a monthly photo call at Ferguson Shipyard? The First Minister, who used to pose for pictures at the yard and shouted from the rooftops that it was one of her proudest achievements. Nicola Sturgeon was happy to take all of the praise. First Minister, when will you start to take the blame? First Minister, Douglas Ross is, is now reduced Douglas Ross is now reduced to simply standing up and making up things that I've said in answers to questions. Um, I, I will never apologise uh, for the actions this government has taken to save the jobs of the people who work in Ferguson shipyards. And perhaps unlike counterparts in other governments, I will always take responsibility for the actions of this government. Presiding officer, I... I agree wholeheartedly that this issue matters. It really matters. And people out there watching right now will want to see me and my government held to account on this. That is right and proper. But, presiding officer, people watching this session right now are also terrified. They're terrified about the inability to heat their homes, the inability to pay their mortgages. Thank you. Thank you. We like to hear each speaker when they are on their feet. Please continue. They are terrified about the security of their pensions. And all week they have heard Douglas Ross demanding that I match Tory tax cuts for the richest people in our society. Tax cuts that have already sunk the pound, crashed the mortgage market, brought people's pensions to the brink of collapse, forced the Bank of England into an emergency bailout tax cuts that will force deep reductions in public spending. And I think uh, people might have wanted to hear Douglas Ross today explain why he thinks the Scottish Government should emulate those policies. For the avoidance of doubt, presiding officer, we will not emulate these policies. But Douglas Ross's silence on his demand that we do so says everything about his poor, appalling judgment. Question number two.